I'm Andy Jones, content editor here at Plaid, and I want to welcome you to our Friday YouTube live stream where we are going to be doing a really fun project using Mod Podge photo transfer medium. So this is what we're using. Uh, this is, uh, it comes in a two ounce bottle packaged with a foam brush. It also comes in a larger eight ounce size. And we are using the photo transfer medium. There is also another formula that's called an image transfer medium, but we're not gonna talk about that one today because the photo transfer medium is my favorite and it is extra special because it lets you transfer photos or images onto fabric, which is my favorite way to use this product. So I have a canvas wine bag here that has an image that I've transferred on it. And what I did, I had a little painting that I did that I liked very much. So I photographed this and then made copies which uh, were printed on a dry toner printer, or you might think of it more as a laser copy of this. Um, so this is the best way to do this, and you want a laser copy, uh, and you want it done on pretty thin paper. Don't try to have it printed on glossy start cardstock or um, heavy paper. The thinner the paper, the better for this. So I'm going to trim this to size just using an ordinary pair of scissors and my feeble eyes to try to cut a nice straight line here. If I wanted to, I could cut this to a different shape and that's what would transfer onto my project. But I'm doing this a simple way and just using the square that is the, it's about the same size as the painting. I could have sized this larger or smaller if I needed to for the, uh, project that I was going to put this on. So I'm trying to keep my workspace neat as we're doing this. And this product has been around for quite a while, but it's one of the more popular formulas of Mod Podge and transferring images to fabric is one of the most popular things to do with this. So I told you I was doing a photo of uh, a painting that I did. But in just a second, I'm going to show you a couple of other ideas that you can do with this Mod Podge photo transfer. Uh, so I've got my picture cut out exactly what I'm going to transfer to my project. Now here is a pillow that was done, uh, and it's an overall uh, image. So this was a larger print that was put onto a pillow using the exact same techniques I'm going to show you today. And then here is another project that I did. And Unfortunately, it's a little dirty, but I took a photo of my beloved St. Bernard Clarice and I put it on this tote bag that I used to carry around uh, her treats and you can see where she's uh, kind of gotten this dirty where she's been nosing down in the bag trying to get treats on her own. But um, if you know somebody or you are a pet lover, you can also do an image of a pet on a special uh, tote bag for treats and things like that. So great. Uh, product to use to make all kinds of fun projects. All right, so let's talk about the actual steps that you need to take to create this project. There are not many steps, and there's only one difficult part, and I'll point that out when we get to it in the step-by-step -step lesson. So first thing to remember is it must be a dry toner copy, so a laser copy of your artwork. Trim it to exactly the size and shape that you want to transfer to your project. Then you want to apply the Mod Podge photo transfer medium to the front side of the copy. Not on the back, you're doing this directly on the front side of the copy. And I'm going to squeeze some out on here and it looks like I'm using a lot, and I am, because you want to put a very generous amount on the surface and then use a brush to spread this out And so here is the pro tip of the day. You want to hold your print in place and spread the photo transfer medium out over the edge. Don't move the copy. Just spread this out over the edge, making sure that you get a generous amount out all the way to the edge. Because if you don't, it's not going to transfer. 
anywhere you miss a spot with this photo transfer medium, it will leave an untransferred spot on your project. So make sure to get a nice, very generous, even coverage on your copy. And I'm going to put a little bit more out on, the, again, the front side of the copy, holding it in place so that you can really get this all the way out to the edges. And this is white. So anything that you get on your project will be white. So be careful not to get this on the other side of your copy. And again, very neatly and carefully cover the entire image. Okay, so I'm gonna set my brush aside and I am going to very carefully pick up my copy and I'm going to place it face down on my project right where I want it. So I know I don't want this all the way at the bottom, but I do want it lined up. So I'm going to put that down and then I want to make sure to get any of this photo transfer medium off my hands because you want clean hands to do this. And we're going to start in the center and we are going to use light pressure and we want to make sure that we make our copy have complete contact with the surface we're transferring it on. Be careful not to press really hard and cause the medium to scooch out from underneath the uh, image. If you do that and you get any bits of white showing out from underneath the copy, you will need to clean that off and get rid of that. Otherwise, it will stay there as a white spot on your project. So once again, making sure that you've got complete contact. This is absolutely crucial to having a successful transfer. So make sure it's all in contact. No air bubbles underneath it. No medium scooching out from underneath your copy. Whew. And then we've done the first step of this. Now here comes the really hard part. You have to wait 24 hours. This has to dry 24 hours, not 12 hours, not eight hours, not six hours, the full 24 hours. And that's the hardest part of this whole process is you have to wait for this to dry for 24 hours. So we're gonna set that aside and I'm going to clean up my work surface because I don't want any of that transfer medium getting on anything I'm working on. And now magically, I have one that has been done, uh, did this yesterday, so it's ready to go. And the other tools that I need are a cup of water and a finger. So what we're going to do is, and I'm gonna start with two fingers, I'm gonna wet my fingers, and I'm going to wet the back of my copy. So I'm getting this nice and wet, and you can see where the moisture is uh, penetrating through the paper and starting to show up the uh, design that's on the copy paper. And I like to get the whole back wet to begin with. So we have our uh, image transfer nice and wet and then I'm going to take my index finger and we start the process of removing all of the paper. This is why you don't want um, a heavy uh, copy paper. You want the thinnest copy paper you can so that you have less copy paper to remove. And so using a light pressure, I'm beginning to remove the paper and you can see it's starting to kind of pill up here and we're getting this paper off. This is not going to be something that can be done in a couple of minutes. It's going to take you some time, but this is kind of brainless work that you can do um, if you're sitting in front of the television, get a TV tray or something, and you can start to rub the paper off of your image transfer. So we're gonna rub, rub, rub. And if it starts to feel like it's drying out a little bit, you can add some more water to it. But you just need to have it wet enough so that your paper is going to roll off for you. So Stephen, do we have any questions? Yes, you can. Uh, you can wash it. I would recommend, uh, my old motto is handmade, hand wash. 
uh, but you can put it in the uh, laundry on the very gentle cycle. I would not recommend drying it in the dryer. Um, if you have to dry it in the dryer, then of course turn the item inside out. So just, just be delicate with it. It, it can withstand some use, but uh, you can certainly launder things this way. That's a great question because I know lots of people will be wanting to do this on uh, t-shirts and tote bags and all sorts of uh, wearable items. So just keep brushing the rolled up bits of paper off, wetting my finger as I need to to get more of this off. And, what I, and I can't spend the whole afternoon with you rubbing this design off. But what I will tell you is when you think you've rubbed all of this paper off and you let it dry for a little while, you're going to come back to it and it's going to have a little bit of a haze, uh, a little bit of a white haze on it. And that's to be expected. Nothing wrong. You haven't done anything wrong. It just means that there's a little bit more paper on there that needs to be uh, removed. So you just keep removing the paper from the back of your image. And eventually, you will have all of the paper rubbed off. Be careful not to uh, become terribly aggressive with uh, rubbing your design off or rubbing in one spot too long because you can actually rub your design off and that would be a tragedy that you just don't want to have happen. But this is how you transfer your image and like I said, nothing is too difficult about this. The worst part is, of course, waiting the 24 hours for it to dry and then you come back and you've just got uh, to rub and remove the paper from the back of your image transfer. Yeah, I've got question for you. Okay, go ahead. No, you need this. Um, this is a different uh, formula. It's a different product. And this is specifically designed. The one I'm using has a white background. So I could put this on a very dark surface. Uh, and this is the, uh, the uh, formula that works on fabric. There is a Mod Podge image transfer, which has a clear uh, uh, base to it. And if I were to put that on, oh, say, something that had stripes on the background, uh, you would see the stripes through your image because it's clear. I could put this over stripes and you would only see the image because the base of this is an opaque white. So great question there, but you need to use the um, folk art photo transfer medium to do this on fabric or if I wanted to transfer an image onto say a craft surface like a, a cutting board or a, a sign for the house or something like that, you would use or you could use the uh, Mod Podge image transfer medium. But this is how it works and it's it's like magic and anybody can do this. It doesn't take a specific skill. It takes a little bit of patience to really rub the paper off and I will tell you if you're smart uh, you won't use a really dark image because the haze uh, tends to linger more on a very dark image than it would on an overall light image. But the little bits of balled up paper you just keep brushing aside and eventually you will end up with a nice clean uh, image like this. So I put this on a wine uh, bag that you could use. It makes a great gift for someone. Uh, if you're you know, traveling uh, to uh, have dinner with someone you can always take them a nice bottle of wine with a nice image that you've put on there. You could personalize it with a, a name or a date or something on there if you wanted to do that. But the Mod Podge photo transfer medium, uh, like I said, it comes packaged in a two ounce bottle with a sponge brush and it's a great product and it's a lot of fun to use. So I hope that you will um, do some of these projects and uh, share them on uh, Plaid's uh, social media sites. You can hashtag Plaid Crafts and we would love to see what you've done. Uh, before we say goodbye, I want to ask Stephen if you've got any other questions. Let's see, catching up. Um, ooh, there's a good question here that says, how does it feel? I guess I mean when you... Yeah, it's, it's fairly soft. It feels, um, it doesn't feel sticky, uh, but it does have like a soft, um, you can tell that there's been an image transferred to it, but it's fairly soft. So it's not going to be, if you put it on uh, an article of clothing, it's not going to be uncomfortable. 
I don't know if it's food safe. I would not think if you're putting it on fabric that you're really going to be having a lot of food on fabric. So I would say don't would eat off of it. Yeah. Let yes, always always guess no uh, to putting food in contact with your craft projects. Okay. Well, other than that, I think we're caught up on questions. Okay, great. So I'm glad that you uh, joined me today. Hopefully you learned something and you'll make some of these great uh, Mod Podge photo transfers. So take care, everybody. We'll see you next week.